committee member on the Palo Alto Network's Cybersecurity Canon, a list of must-read books for the cybersecurity professional. And today we're here with Lise Mahool, who's a project manager of the Talon Manual and co-author of the Talon Manual 2. Uh, the Talon Manual is one of this year's inductee to the Cybersecurity Canon. Welcome. Thank you. My pleasure. So in 2009, the Native Cooperative Cyber Defense Center of Excellence invited an independent group of international experts to produce a manual on the law governing cyber warfare, and the Talon Manual is born from that. So what we want to know is what's the scope of the project? It's huge. If I have this right, it took you three years and 20 experts to produce the book. Tell us about it. That's right. Uh, that was a pretty uh, big project, uh, especially in the field of cyber and how international law interacts with cyber. But uh, to talk specifically about the project, we did have a group of 20 international lawyers who authored it. Mm -hmm. They were both uh, scholars of international law as well as practitioners. Some of them had thought about and written about cyber before, but others had not. So, and that was actually one of the challenges that we faced, uh, which was to bring those lawyers up to speed with regard to the technology. But with regard to the process, it did in indeed take us uh, three years. Uh, the group worked out of Tallinn, Estonia, which is where the NATO Cooperative Cyber Defense Center of Excellence is based. And they also, of course, worked between uh, meetings uh, from uh, their homes, uh, which were primarily in North America and Western Europe. Fantastic. So now I understand that uh, though there were 20 scholars, there was an, also an extensive peer review process. Can you explain how that was done and to the degree it was done? After we had finalized the manuscript, uh, we did invite uh, around 15 peer reviewers to make sure that each of the chapters that the expert group had agreed upon would be reviewed by at least one or two uh, people who are true experts in the field, whether they have thought much about cyber or whether they're really great international lawyers. So uh, it gave us a little bit of self-confidence before publication of the book to have had some external people read the manuscript and in a sense approve it. But of course their feedback helped us improve the product as well. What kind of things came out of the feedback that surprised you? you know, did you see th some things and uh, the peer reviewers came back with some challenges or some questioning of thought? Like how did you negotiate through that? But to be honest, the peer review process didn't create that many surprises for us. And I think it was because the 20 experts really are top names in the field and they had spent three years thinking about those issues. So, so the legal analysis was really solid uh, by the time it got to the peer reviewers. But I have to say that in the process, what perhaps surprised us the most was what happened after the book came out. So Cambridge University Press launched it in March 2013. And it was a quite a big event at Chatham House in London. And after the launch, we saw some uh, very interesting headlines in the media. Uh, the fact that media reported in the manual in the first place was an, a little bit surprising because after all, we were publishing a law book. Mm. And law books usually are boring, and they're mostly only read, about, uh, read by lawyers. So this time around, we had uh, the journalists jump on this uh, news item. And so they were reporting about the Talon Manual, and we saw headlines along the lines of NATO commissioned reports as uh, killing hackers is basically okay oh. in, uh, in cyber war. So headlines like that popped up, and uh, this made the PR folks in, in Tallinn as well as at NATO headquarters in Brussels were wishing that they had majored in biology instead of PR. Oh, wow. <laughs> that is that's fantastic. So, you know, even to the extent, you know, as we sat down to talk about this and, and you kind of said, you know, I'm surprised that this is being read by non-lawyers. And so with that, you know, the Talon Manual kind of brings the intersection of security engineers or cybersecurity professionals or defensive technicians to the legal community. And it's, it's an intersection. So, um, you know, what did we or did the, the Talon Manual group of authors consider a black letter law? What does that mean to us? I actually had to make a phone call to find out what that meant. So help me understand what that means. A black letter rule in the Talon Manual, um, well, first of all, what it does is that it reflects the view of the 20 experts as to what the law actually is in the cyber context. Uh, first of all, most inter international law predates cyber. 
So the task for the, for the experts was to take, for example, the UN Charter and the Geneva Conventions and then apply and interpret them in the cyber context. And this translation exercise resulted in 95 so-called black letter rules, which is in the view of all 20, in other words, a unanimous decision that this is the law in the cyber context. But for uh, outsiders, um, uh, the black letter rules in the Talent Manual are not the law in, a, in the sense as the UN Charter is, but it is the law in the view of the 20 experts. But I must admit that because those 20 experts were world-class scholars, uh, that's a pretty strong statement as to what indeed the law is. Right, and, and I think as a, as a security professional, I just want to know what that is. I think, and, and my community just kind of says, well, help us understand you know, what are the constraints we're working in and what is, our, what is our enemy working in or what are these laws? And so that, I think that was really helpful. So um, it's not often you see this, so I'm gonna ask, um, right up front in the book, it comes right out and says, this is what the Talon Manual is not. Can you explain like what exactly is intended? Like how did, how did we separate the book into two parts that way? Well, I'm really glad you asked this question because uh, the introduction of the book is really important and not many people read this, which has led to some misunderstandings about the book. So uh, good job that you did actually read it. But uh, the point uh, in that statement was to make clear that the Talent Manual only focuses uh, on two regimes of international law. The use at bellum, which is the international law that governs state resort to force as an instrument of its national policy. Mm -hmm. It's the law that's codified in the UN Charter. And secondly, the law of armed conflict, which is that body of international law that regulates the conduct of hostilities. Okay. In other words, the, the law that applies to wars between states and also civil wars. But. Um, we did not, in Talon 1, address many other areas of international law that exist. And uh, we didn't want people to think that because the Talon Manual only focuses on these two areas of international law, every cyber incident must be assessed in the framework of either the use of bellum of the law of armed conflict. Because in reality, most cyber operations that states uh, face or that they undertake occur outside the context of those two bodies of law. It's the so-called peacetime international law that governs, for example, Sony-type cyber attacks. Okay. All right. That's good. That's handy. Thank you. All right. So that brings us to our kind of next question, right? So you project managed the first Talon manual. And that had to be a learning experience in its own right. But coming up, we have Talon Manual 2, and you're a contributing author. Can you tell us what we can expect in the Talon 2? Well, Talon 2 does exactly what Talon 1 did not do, which is to analyze the international law that falls beyond the threshold. So whereas Talon 1 dealt with the Stuxnet-type cyber operations, the more damaging ones, mm -hmm. as well as those that occur during wartime, for example, those that we have recently seen in the Ukraine and Syria wars, Talon 2 does address peacetime international law. And peacetime international law is a broad term and it's not a legal term, and we use it to refer to various legal regimes. So, for example, we uh, address diplomatic and consular law, which is relevant for cyber operations that are designed to intercept diplomatic communications. We look at air law, uh, which is relevant for airborne cyber operations, for example. When you think of uh, tapping submarine communications cables, this activity is governed by the law of the sea. And we also deal with hot topics such as attribution under international law, as well as uh, hackbacks in response to cyber attacks by the private sector, which for this audience is uh, probably especially interesting. interesting. Yes. Yeah, so, so what I'm here because hacking back has actually been a big was a big conversation topic um, just at RSA, and it's 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 a growing conversation point. So that's interesting that we'll see that coming up. So that is the cybersecurity canons induction of the Talon manual, and hopefully we're all looking forward to Talon 2 and uh, its application in our day-to-day -day operations as security professionals. So thank you, Palo Alto Networks and the cybersecurity canon. Thank you, Lise, for joining us today, and we're looking forward to the next one.